welcome to Yorkville Congregational United Church of Christ, a church that welcomes, serves, and cares together. I have some announcements for you this morning. Wednesday night dinners are going to start back up soon, and we need some folks to volunteer so you can volunteer and fix dinner one of the nights or two of the nights um, contact the office and there's more information in the bulletin board in the narthex the spiritual development group will begin september 12th at 7 p.m on google meet um, there will be uh, copies of the booklet available in the church office and if you would like uh, Diane's contact information, you can email us here at the church. The newsletters, if you would like to receive the newsletter via um, email and not be mailed to you or vice versa, you can um, fill out a form that's available in the office. Children's library, so exciting. Two kinds of work so hard to organize the children's library. So. Um, Look for on the Facebook page or the Giving Tree um, an Amazon wish list to order some books for the library to freshen it up a little bit. Sunday school registration is now open for all students, pre kindergarten through 12th grade. The blue forms can be found on the front table or outside the CE office. Volunteers are needed for September 2nd for Touch a Truck. It's our way we're involved in this community event. And now let us begin our worship. Good morning. If you're able, will you please stand and join me in our call to worship? Come on. What joy we feel when we are called together to celebrate God's love. God's love flows through our lives. This is what it means to be the body of Christ. Let us by being let us rejoice on this day. God, thank, you, thank you for our blessing that you form us. Um, and our prayer and vocation, as summer draws to a close, we begin to focus our attention to the activities of autumn. For some, it will mean preparing children for school. For others, youth will be preparing to enter college or the workforce or perhaps military service. Be with these precious ones as they embark on life's journeys. Be with each one of us as we encounter life's challenges. Open our hearts to receive your healing mercy and your transforming love. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. And our opening hymn this morning is number 575, Come and Find the Quiet Center.
you may be seated and that the children could join me on the steps. All right, so my question for you today, is this glass of water half empty or is it half full? Yes. It is overflowing. I love that. You came up with your own answer. That is wonderful. That's a different way to look at it, isn't it? That our cups are always overflowing. And the air, the air is in it. It's full because of air and water. So is the water, so I'm going to ask the question again and see if I get a new, a different new answer or, a, or the same answer or answer I'm suspecting. Is it half full or half empty? Yes. What? Oh, no, not, no, no. You can't, I'm not going to call you again. Okay. <laughs> is it half empty? All right, let's look. What do you think? What is this? Half full. Does anybody think it's half empty? It's just half. It could be. Have you ever heard the expression, you're looking at it like the glass is half full or half empty? Meaning people who see this glass half empty is something that maybe would be negative. Or the person that would think they were being negative might, or if they've been called negative, they might say, I'm just being realistic. It is only halfway up. It's half empty. But when we think about someone being positive, we say our cup is half full because it's overflowing because there's air in there too, and that's positive. When we think about being positive and staying focused, maybe you were positive uh, your first day of school. Some of you've had your first days of school already, right? Your first day of school, this is going to be a new year. I'm going to be positive. Do you know the difference? Have you thought about the difference between hope, being hopeful, and being positive? Is there a difference? There's a, there's a slight difference. When we think about um, being hopeful, we think about it being positive. So being hopeful is being more than being positive or being more than being realistic. It's about thinking about all of the possibilities that we cannot even imagine. You can't even imagine the good year you're going to have at school because we can't imagine the possibilities, and that's, that's the hope that God gives us. And so let's pray a line. I'm going to pray a line, and then we'll pray it up to God together. Let's see if we can pray nice and loud together this morning. Dear gracious God, thank you for the hope that you offer us to help us through our good days and our bad. Help us to remember that our lives overflow with your joy and love. Amen. All right, you may go off to church school. Now we begin our time of prayer. For those of you at home, it's a time to pray silently or reflect or pray with those that are around you. And here in person, we're going to share our prayers together. Now let us begin our prayer time.
disciples, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Now, as we think about hope and hope that all our community of this congregation can share with the community outside of our, of our building, let us consider our gifts and give them back to God. Let us receive our morning offering. Let us pray. God of abundance and joy, we thank you for the many blessings you have poured on our lives. Receive these gifts lovingly given and bless them in your service. Amen. You may be seated. The scripture for this morning is from the book of Matthew, chapter 15, verses 21 through 28. The Canaanite woman's faith. Jesus left that place and went away to the district of Tyre and Sidon. Just then, a Canaanite woman from that region came out and started shouting, Have mercy on me, Lord, son of David. My daughter is tormented by a demon. But he did not answer her at all. And his disciples came and urged him, saying, Send her away, for she keeps shouting after us. He answered, I was sent only to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. She came and knelt before him, saying, Lord, help me. He answered, It's not fair to take the children's food and throw it to the dogs. She said, Yes, Lord, but even the dogs eat the crumbs that fall from their master's table. Then Jesus answered her, Woman, great is your faith. Let it be done for you as you wish. And her daughter was healed instantly. Our hymn 
is number 518. This is a day of new beginnings, verses 1 and 3. During children's time, when I talk about a glass being half empty and half full, uh, I think about those things and hope. And when we remember, it's important to remember as we talk about hope and we think about negative, being negative or being positive and staying positive, that's different than the hope that God offers us. That's different than hope. So being hopeful it is possible, I believe, to be hopeful or negative and hopeful and positive because hope helps us to see beyond our imagination of what is possible to come or know that there may be a solution or a hope that we don't realize yet that's there for us. And persistent hope is hope that transcends the imaginable. And so in our scripture this morning, the Canaanite woman continually is asking Jesus a couple times for help because she knows that there is help to her beyond her imagination. And when we think of this Jesus, sometimes when we think of Jesus, we think of baby Jesus. We think of sweet baby Jesus. Or we think about Jesus who is willing to heal and to feed and to, and to take it all on. This Jesus that we meet this morning is a little bit different, sounds a little bit different. The Canaanite woman says, have mercy on me, Lord. Have mercy on me. Help me. And Jesus responds, I was only sent to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. He is saying, I am only available to the house, the people of Israel. She does not take no for an answer. She persists. And she says, Lord, help me. And at this point, we may expect for him to do so. But instead, he says, it is not fair to take the children's fruit, food and throw it to the dogs. So he is in, within the tradition of how, the, the terrible tradition really, of how the Israelites saw the Canaanites, and the Israelites saw the Canaanites as dogs. So really, Jesus is calling this woman a dog. And that is not something that we're used to. We like Jesus in the cradle, wrapped in swaddling clothes. We like Jesus feeding the 5,000. Now, she responds with, yet even the dogs eat the crumbs. Even the dogs have a place at the table. She is, she is letting him know and reminding him that there's food enough, there's love enough for everybody. And so he responds with, great is your faith and heals the woman's daughter. And so why might Jesus be responding this way? There are some explanations. You could think about maybe this is him 
teaching about the disciples what maybe they should be doing. It could be that he is not wanting at this point to cross the boundary and heal a Canaanite woman because he's working on healing and preaching as a rabbi to the Israel community. There are lots of ways we can explain this, perhaps. But in the end, this is a story about a woman whose hope transcends the imaginable and Jesus healing her because she had the faith and she had the strength to keep at it. Great is your faith. Great is our faith when we persistently hope and that that hope then eventually transcends what we imagine. There is a movie called Shawshank Redemption. Who here has seen the movie? Okay, good. So <laughs> it's, a, it's one of my favorite movies. And Shawshank Redemption is a movie about hope, about being persistent during some pretty significant struggles. And so here it is a snapshot of the first part of the movie. So Andy, Andy is in, he gets the main character. He is convicted of murdering his wife. He is innocent, he believes, because he doesn't one, remember, and two, he doesn't think he would be able to do that. Either way, he blames himself for his wife's death because he, of his actions as uh, a person. And it, he did not kill her. And then the next photo next to the lineup before they go in to the prison, and as they go in the prison, if you can remember, or if maybe if you can imagine, if you haven't seen the movie, their spirits are completely depleted because they're physically and verbally abused. And so eventually, Andy makes friends with Red, and then they are able to share their thoughts and their actions and Andy shares his hopes. But Andy is able to maneuver it as such because he was a banker before he was in prison. He ended up doing everyone's taxes and giving financial advice. So the baseball outfits are all the guards lining up after a scrimmage game, getting the help from Andy in prison. And the bottom right is after he spends a month in solitude. And his friends at the table at lunch were saying, how did you manage? How did you do it? And he said, because I have something inside of me that no one can touch. And Andy says, there are places in the world that aren't made out of stone. There's something inside they can't touch. And Rudd responds, what are you talking about? And Andy says, and they continue to talk, they continue to talk. And Red says, hope is a dangerous thing, my friend. It can kill a man. The idea that if we hang on to a hope that that will diminish who we are and we'll, we'll be disappointed was sad to Andy. And he responds with, hope is a good thing. Maybe even the best thing and good things never die. And he had faith and he had persistent hope that he could make at least his small world a little better. Even though sometimes our systems around us fail. The prison system that Stephen King wrote about in the late 1940s is a little reflective of our prison system today. Our prison system today being in much worse shape, of course, than the prison in this movie. So Andy meets uh, the librarian and talks to the librarian as he's there because he is able to do the books. And he starts to talk about how the library needs um, books. But at the same time, the librarian is very upset because he has been released. His parole had been granted. And that's him um, with his head in his hand talking to Andy, saying, I don't know how I'm going to make it on the outside. And then he gets to a halfway house and gets the support that is available to him, but it's not enough. 
and, and the librarian ends up harming himself. And so our systems fail in the prison system even today where there's not enough health care, there's not enough ability for folks to be taken care of. There is not the recovery there to help them to rehabilitate and find support. Another way in which, in which they saw the system fail and Andy kept continually to try and make things better is when the warden talked about the Inside Out program. And the Inside Out program was just that. The prisoners would go out and work for a minimal wage. And the minimal wage was very, it was not very much. And the man with the hat who's carrying a pink pie box is saying, I can't compete. You have to stop asking for contracts because I can't compete with you because you are really offering slave labor because you don't have to pay people to work. And so we think about today and we think about how our prison systems are full and they're doing work and they're doing work at, at a substantial less rate than the minimum wage. It doesn't help to heal. It doesn't help to make those that are trying to rehabilitate whole. It diminishes. So this systems have failed, but all the while, Andy's in the library and he decides that they need more books. So he writes a letter a week to the, to the, the state government and they never answer. And one time they did, they sent him a pile of books and then someone asked him, what was he going to do? Was he gonna stop writing letters now because he got what he wanted? And he said, no, I am going to write two letters a week. And he did. He got more and more books. And eventually, they were able to establish a very sophisticated prison library. And he was able to teach those that he liked um, to get a GED. And a GED is so important even to get a job after someone leaves. Um, incarceration. And so his faith was great and his persistent hope transcended the imaginable. And so, I, this is only going to spoil it for very few of you, <laughs> um, but he escapes, right? He had gotten a little tiny rock app and worked for 20 years to, did I ruin it for, <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> I, you know, it's a feel-good movie, so you know it's going to work out. So there's a little axe that he, that he picks, and he said, you know, when he first got that little tiny pickaxe, Red was like, it's going to take you, to, you know, 30 years to, to get a tunnel out there. And he did. It was 20 years or 19 or something that he finally had this, this tunnel out that he had worked so hard on. And he kept, this is, I love this. I discovered this when I blew up a photo of the Bible. When he first arrived, the warden had given him the Bible, and it said, salvation lies within. And so as he was digging, he kept the little pickaxe in the Bible at the beginning of Exodus, right? How beautiful is that? Exodus, <laughs> he's going to escape. And so when the warden finds the Bible and he opens up the Bible that's in, I won't give any more away, opens up the Bible and says, <laughs> and says, okay, I opens it up and there's a little note, a little note, and the warden says, you're, and the note says, warden, you're right. Salvation does lie within because that's where he kept the little pickaxe. And then somehow they make it to a beautiful, a beautiful beach, which is always the way I like happy endings to end on a beautiful beach. And this is because of the character that Stephen King wrote about, continually to have persistent hope. And we think about the persistent hope of the Canaanite woman that went to Jesus and said, help me, Lord, help me, have mercy. And Jesus said, great is your faith. And our faith is great when our persistent hope transcends the imaginable. 
and all that is there for us that can happen to us, we understand is God's hope and that we can hope beyond uh, our hope and we live beyond what we can imagine. Amen. Now let us pray. God of the unimaginable, we are grateful and thankful for your gift of hope, a hope that transcends our imagination. Help us to keep this hope when all seems lost. As Maui works to recover and more storms are set to hit California after the impact of a hurricane, we ask for hope, the hope that will bring change and support as weather crises continue. We also ask God that you are with first responders who are so important at any, at any first arrival, whether it's someone who is sick or ailing or whether it's firefighters combating large and massive flames and fires. We ask God that they feel your love and that God, we ask that your love is felt and our love is felt for those that are imprisoned. We ask God for your love and light to shine in the places of fear and hate. Help us to seek and find ways to reform a broken system. Help us to find a way to stop what leads to imprisonment, to stop people before they become imprisoned. Be with the families that are missing those because they are imprisoned and separate. God, we also know that there are people suffering because they are separated, not just because someone's in prison, because someone has moved on to a different part of their lives and it's joyous in their celebration. And sometimes, God, we're separated from our loved ones and our friends because of sad moments, sometimes the moments that are too many to enumerate, God. And remind us that with your hope, God, we may know peace and justice, the peace and justice that sustains us and heal our broken world, a world broken by violence and crime and war. And God, we ask for a peace and hope that surpasses all our understanding and surpasses all our imagination. In your holy name we pray. Amen. All right, well, I'd invite you to go ahead and stand. I am sorry, correct me, right? And let's worship together one last time in song. Here we go. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. to fear and grace my fears relieved how precious did that grace appear the hour I first believed my chains are gone to me.
endures as long as life, as long as life endures. My chains are gone, I've been set free, my God, my Savior has ransomed me. chains are gone I've been set free my God my Savior has ransomed me and the God but His mercy reigns unending love amazing grace The earth shall soon dissolve like snow, the sun forever to shine. But God who calls me here below will be forever mine, will be will be forever mine you are forever mine you are forever mine now let us hold hands raise our hands and join in singing the alleluia So this week, as we go out and do our routines and enjoy and think about what is in the news, let us remember to hope beyond our imagination. Amen. Amen.